Hi everyone, welcome to The Apprentice Diary. This is the beginning of a series of video where I document my 10-year journey towards getting into my dream school, the MIT Media Lab. Along the way, I will talk about the different opportunities I got such as internship at Harvard, internship at the Max Planck Institute, and much more. I'm hoping that through this series of video, I can give you valuable insights into my journey and give you inspiration to get started with your first step towards achieving your goals and dreams. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an inventor, someone who could bring ideas to life using my own hands and skills. But it wasn't until 2008 with the release of the first Iron Man movie that I realized I wanted to work on human-computer interaction research. And I just remember the technology shown in the film where Tony was tinkering around in his garage and you see this tabletop projection and room scale context awareness and a human-like AI called Jarvis. So during high school, I started researching for places where I can do ACI research. And I heard of the MIT Media Lab for the first time and I started looking more into it and figured that they do a lot of cool research on digital projection, human-computer interaction. It's a place where People don't come with a traditional background. They're not just full-fledged um, engineer, but um, people usually have a lot of different skill sets in the arts, in the sciences, engineering, and so on. So I thought this would be a really cool place to be. And I guess this also helps that the fictional character in Iron Man, Tony Stark, also graduated from MIT. But now there was one problem. I did not do well in school, and I didn't even go to a fancy private school at all in my home country in Panama. I ended up with a 3.5 GPA during my senior year of high school, and I literally failed the SAT twice, getting below average score. It was terrible. I remember almost fainting during the test because I've never done a test for that long, and I didn't eat and had a lot of anxiety going into the test. I also did the TOEFL twice, which is the test that international students have to take to prove their English proficiency. I think I got a 90 out of 120, and for MIT, the minimum requirement was 90, and the recommended score was at least 100. Additionally, even though I really liked human-computer interaction technology, I didn't actually do any project to show that passion. I guess I didn't know that you can look online for tutorials and just follow those tutorials to you know, invent things by yourself. Um, I didn't have the guidance, I didn't have the um, resources to actually do it, but I guess at the end of the day, I might not have been resourceful at all. To give you a better idea of the education system that I went through, we did not have any kind of club or extracurricular activities except for maybe sport. So there were no robotic club. We had science fair and we participated in like chemistry, physics, math, Olympiads, but I was really bad at it. I literally fell during the first round. Honestly, I think I was just not good enough at anything. I was not good academically. I was not good at finding resources. Um, I think I was just trying to stay alive um, during my time in school. So I decided to not apply to MIT for undergrad and just try my luck at other universities. I got rejected from Purdue, Georgia Tech, and all the UCs. Hey, but fortunately, I got a full ride scholarship to study engineering anywhere in the world. And I eventually got acceptance letters to a small university called Rose Hammond Institute of Technology in Indiana, USA and also got acceptance letter from Arizona State University. And between the two, I decided to go to Rose Hammond for undergrad, and I think that was one of the best decisions I've made in my life. The difficult access to learning opportunities in Panama made me realize that I missed out on a lot of different experience that people here in the U.S. have. So I tried to gain those experience back by joining multiple clubs, overloading in my classes, participating in different activities such as hackathons and different kinds of events. I could get into the specific if you're interested, but long story short, it took me way too many steps, basically a 10-year journey to get into my dream school, the MIT Media Lab. And that was after applying twice. 
it was so freaking unreal when I got the acceptance email. I could not believe it. And the first thing I did was to call my dad and tell him that I got in. And he literally called me several times during that day asking if it was real, if it was a scam. Anyway, if I was able to achieve this dream, I feel like anyone can as long as they are persistent and they are constantly working towards improving themselves. One day you will be rewarded for all your hard work, so stay positive and stay hopeful. As part of this series, I'll be sharing the details into how I got the opportunity to work at Harvard, Max Planck, and MIT. And at the end of each video, I'll be providing tips and step-by-step -step instruction that you can follow to improve your skills. Let me know if you have any questions or want me to cover a specific topic of my journey in the comment down below. Share the videos with your friends. Show some love by hitting the subscribe and the like buttons. Stay strong and I will see you in the next one.